Personal insolvencies have been slowly increasing this year thanks to rising interest rates, a decline in consumer spending and the economy readjusting from the large amounts of stimulus the government provided during COVID. Insolvencies are still more than 50% lower than pre-COVID levels. However, these numbers are slowly rising each month. Joining me now is Angus Sedgwick, the CEO of non-bank lender OptiPay. Angus, thanks for your time. Do you expect that trend to continue with insolvencies to slowly keep increasing? Hi, Ed. Thanks very much for having me. Uh, absolutely, I do. Uh, what we're seeing now as a result of uh, the almost the false environment that, that the COVID pandemic created, where there was lots of cash in the economy, um, the government was um, providing job JobKeeper, lots of grants, the government guaranteed loans. As a result of that, during those COVID years, there was a lot of businesses that probably should have gone into insolvency that didn't, mm. phantom businesses, etc. We're now seeing that uh, those uh, chickens come home to roost, so to speak, and with those, all those things you mentioned, high inflation, high interest rates, uh, those businesses that aren't sustainable, that aren't profitable, will definitely uh, will, will see the rising uh, insolvency rates. Yeah, I think it's... I just want to point out, though, it is worth noting, when you look at the data, our economy's averaging about 2,700 insolvencies per quarter. Pre-pandemic, it was about 8,000. So numbers today are still clearly a lot better than four or five years ago, but they are on the rise. They are on the rise, and, and, and the lag effect of what we saw during during the COVID, where there was lots of cash in the economy... I mean, our, our business, OptiPay, we're a provider of invoice financing uh, for Australian businesses, and we saw the utilisation rate during COVID being the amount of money that our clients drew from their availability, fell from traditionally about 66% to about 30%. Right. So businesses just didn't need cash because the government was just pouring it out and the ATO wasn't collecting. We'll talk about that more now. Um, but, yeah, absolutely, it's still below, but it, we'll see it definitely kick up over the over the coming 12 months. Yeah, you mentioned the ATO as part of the federal budget this year. The government announced the tax, the tax office and amnesty applies to overdue tax returns. ATO is basically trying to raise billions of dollars in unpaid debts, but... Have businesses with a turnover of $10 million or less been taking them up on this offer? Yeah, look, I believe it has been quite successful. Um, obviously, during COVID, where the ATO wasn't collecting tax debt, it, the, the tax debt blew out to over $50 billion is where it is now, of which $33 billion is owed by, by businesses uh, and another $1.8 billion of superannuation guarantee levy. So the, the, the ATO, in the, in the last budget, uh, or the federal government instructed the ATO to come out with this amnesty that said, if you haven't lodged uh, your uh, business activity statements and your income tax returns... If you do it now, come to us now before the end of this finance, sorry, this calendar year, 31st of December, any penalties will be will be waived. But you need to actively, pro proactively engage with the ATO. The, the thought of just sticking your head in the sand and thinking, oh, I'm going to get away, that, that's not going to work. Uh, the ATO will come after you eventually and, and, and will result in winding up. Also, DPN, still, uh, Director Penalty Notices, if, if they're issued, the director becomes personally liable for those debts. Mm -hmm. So don't think it's all wrapped up in the business so I can just wind that business up. It, it will have knock-on effects to, to business directors personally. All right, looking at OptiPay, what sectors are coming to you right now needing support? Yeah, OK. So we, we see a lot of, from the construction space, as, you, as you'd expect, um, with the rising uh, cost of, of commodities um, and, and debt a days blowing out. Uh, there is, there's a lot of demand from the construction space. We're very cautious with that space, obviously. Um, but um, wholesale trade, uh, manufacturing, labour hire, transport and logistics, agriculture... Um, all of those businesses, any business that's providing goods and services to another business on credit terms, uh, 30 days, 30 days end of month, 60 days out to 90 days, mining services is another good one, can utilise invoice financing in that we're bringing forward the cash that's owed to them from un their unpaid invoices. How many clients roughly have you got right now? Oh, we've got several hundred clients around Australia that are servicing about uh, 5,000 different debtors, both Australia and internationally. And how do you fund your loans? We, we borrow money from an investment bank in Australia. How are you feeling about the rest of this year? Are you feeling pretty confident and upbeat? Or? Yeah, look, it's, it's no, no question, Ed. It's a tough economic climate. Um, I'm, I'm optimistic. I mean, the, the next six months will be difficult, uh, and those businesses the probably said before shouldn't be in business will probably collapse. Uh, and we've got very stringent credit underwriting. And, and the beauty of invoice finance is you're actually not taking credit risk over the business itself. You're not lending them money that they have to service and pay back. We're advancing money against an unpaid invoice owed by a debtor. Uh, so we're actually taking credit risk on their, on their customers which we mitigate with trade credit insurance. So, look, I'm, I'm seeing that the next six months will be difficult, but um, probably from middle of next year, so coming into FY25, I think interest rates will start to come back down and, uh, yeah, I mean, it depends on what happens to geopolitically and the rest of the world to, to some extent. But, yeah, I, I think there's some, some light on the horizon, but a little bit more pain to go through yet. OK, so it could still take a while, but it looks like things may get better soon. I, I believe so, yes. Yeah. Angus Sedgwick, thanks so much for your time. Ed, thanks very much for having me.